Hey Booktube! Well, we just finished apocalypse a in September and October now has two readathons that I want to join in. The first one is Victober. I participated in Victober before. I really enjoy it. I have a lot of Victorian literature that I want to get to, so I definitely want to participate in this one. The other one is the Spookathon, which I have not participated in before, but it's focused on what I like to read in October, which is spooky stories anyway, so I'm going to give this one a shot. That one's only a week long. I'll do that one second. So my first TBR is for Victober, and the hosts of this readathon are uh, Ange at Beyond the Pages, Kate Howe, Katie at Books and Things, and Lucy the Reader. Uh, there is uh, a challenge from each one of those hosts. There's also a general challenge, which is to read by candlelight, which I don't plan on doing. Um, my eyesight is not the greatest at best, and I don't want to set fire or something, so we'll be passing on that one. There's also a group read-along, uh, which is to read two plays by Oscar Wilde. Uh, one of them is A Woman of No Importance, which I've never read, uh, and the other is uh, The Importance of Being Earnest, which I read back in high school. And I remember finding it exceedingly funny, so I'm hoping I will still feel the same way about it, uh, picking it up many, many years later. So I'll be reading from this edition, this is a Harper Collins Complete Works. Um, so that has a, a certain time frame as to um, which acts are being read when. Uh, you can find that out on their websites. In terms of the individual challenges, um, we have, uh, first one is read a book by a female author, and it's a bonus points if it's uh, someone who's new to you. This particular author is not new to me, so no bonus points for me. Um, and excuse me if I sound a little nasally, I still have a cold I'm dealing with. But I plan on reading uh, Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. I previously read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall from her, and I absolutely adored it. Uh, but I've had this one for a while now. I believe this was her debut novel about a young woman uh, who becomes a governess due to financial difficulties within her family, and it's her story of um, the difficulties of dealing with that particular profession. It's apparently loosely based on... Um, and Bronte's own personal experiences in that profession as well. Uh, the second challenge is reread a Victorian book. I don't have a physical copy for this because I'm going to be using an audiobook, uh, and I'm going to be listening to The Valley of Fear by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It's one of the four Sherlock Holmes novels that he wrote, and I'm going to be reading, uh, listening to a version um, read by Stephen Fry. I happen to find this on audible.com. Actually, the complete works are available being read by him, so I downloaded the whole set, found that particular story, and uh, I read that some time ago. I've only read this story, I think, once, because I do not remember anything about the plot of it. I've read all the other short stories and the other novels, but for some reason, I've never picked that one up again. So I'm looking forward to kind of revisiting that and remembering what the story is about, basically. Uh, the third challenge is to read a Victorian novel under 250 pages and or over 500 pages. I'm going the lesser route because of the time frame and the amount of books I'd be reading. And I'm just going to double up on that challenge with Agnes Gray. This comes in under like 169 pages or so with the notes included. And the fourth challenge is to read a Victorian novel published in the same year as your favorite Victorian classic. Difficult to pin down one particular Victorian classic as my favorite. Uh, a couple fall into that category. One of those is The Picture of Dorian Gray. And I looked at some of the titles available. Didn't really have any copies of them. Didn't have any interest in reading those. Uh, the other one is Dracula. Uh, that was published in 1897, and I looked at some of the titles available that were published in that same year, one of them which I actually have on my shelf, and that is Richard Kipling's Captain's Courageous, about a rather spoiled rich kid who is suddenly thrown into um, working in a fishery, I think it says. Uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's a hapless castaway force to prove himself in the rough man's world of the Grand Banks fisheries. Uh, Fairly thin. Whether I get to this one or not, uh, I'm not certain I will. This is the kind of lowest on my reading priority. Uh, in addition to those stories, um, I also have a series of books uh, on um, my e-reader for Kindle. They're called the uh, Windborne Book of Victorian Ghost Stories. Uh, this is volume one of it, and there's the lady herself. Uh, there's a whole series of uh, stories. This particular volume has only women authors that the... Um, editor has chosen to, to include here, and um, I think I have like nine volumes of this, but because I like to focus my reading around ghostly stories during the month of October, uh, I really would like to get to some of these as well. So here's uh, page one of the table of contents. You can see some of the titles. Elizabeth Gaskell is one of the first ones up on there. Um, then there's page two. And a 
that there's one more on the third page. So whether I complete this or not, I don't know if I will, but uh, I would like to delve into at least some of the stories within that. So that is uh, pretty much my TBR. Um, I will say I'm going to include another audio book if, I, if uh, I finish Valley of Fear, which should go fairly quickly. I'll be wanting something to listen to to my drive back and forth to work. My other book planned will be uh, Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell, which also falls within that category of Victorian reads. So that's my TBR for um, Victober. Now moving on to Spookathon. Let me bring up the notes for that. Uh, that's hosted by Books and Lala, and uh, that only runs from October 14th through the 20th, so just a week-long read-along. There's five challenges. So I always find these week-long readathons um, just to be overly saturated with challenges. Uh, it's a lot to get through um, having a book for each one of these in one week. But uh, I have a couple selections uh, that kind of double up on some of the challenges, and I may or may not get to all of them. Um, I'll just read out the challenges first. One is read a thriller. Second is read a book with a red on the cover. Third is read a book with a spooky word in the title. Number four is read a book with a spooky setting. And number five is read something you wouldn't normally read. Um, my first main one that I would like to get to uh, would constitute the one for a spooky word in the title and a spooky setting, and that's the Falkcroft Ghosts by Darcy Coates. I read one of her other books recently, um, and I really enjoyed it. It's, I think, self-published, and the typeface is pretty well-spaced, so I should be able to fly through that. It's, um, let's see, about 237 pages or so. And it says, when their mother is hospitalized, Tara and Kyle are sent to stay with their only remaining relatives, their grandparents. It's their first time meeting May and Peter Falcroft. The elderly couple are friendly at first, and the house, hidden in the base of the mountains, is full of nooks and to explore. So there's your spooky setting, and you have ghosts in the title. Uh, but strange things keep happening. The swing moves on its own. Peter paces around the house late at night and seems obsessed with the lake where his sister drowned. Doors slam, and curtains shift when no one is inside, and one room is kept permanently locked. When a storm cuts the phone line, their only contact with the outside world, Tara and Kyle must find a way to protect themselves from their increasingly erratic grandparents and from the ghosts that inhabit Falcroft's house. So, that sounds really awesome. And uh, the only other uh, challenge I can meet uh, with this particular book is uh, read a book with red on the cover. I could also qualify for the scary word in the title, because it's called The Nightmares. This is by Dan Pablaki, and as you can see, quite a bit of red in there. I'll just go ahead and read the synopsis for you. Um, it says, Timothy July has a secret and it's giving him nightmares. Abigail Tremens has a problem. Her nightmares are haunting her while she is awake. When they team up for a school project, they don't realize that Abigail's past and Timothy's present are making them the target of a terrible curse, a curse that runs, that turns their worst fears to reality. But their fears are just the beginning. The curse stems from a strange artifact that gains strength by devouring a human soul, and it needs to feed again. Uh, this is Dan Pablaki has written another bone-chilling page-turner to give you goosebumps. It's the kind of book best read on a bright afternoon, which may keep your nightmares at bay. So, yeah, I love the cover. That just that looks like something out of a Stephen King um, movie. But anyway, uh, so I have that, and um, the Fullcroft goes for my spookathon. If I have time, I may also throw in another book that doesn't actually fit any challenges. I, I suppose you could put one that you don't... The challenge of uh, read something that you don't normally read. I don't actually normally read very many graphic novels. I may be stretching this a little bit, yes. I do read a lot of manga, not so many graphic novels, because um, I don't usually find a lot that I like, actually, but um, besides, like, The Walking Dead. Um, but I do have a few. Anyway, yes, I'm stretching this. I, but for that, I'm going to pick uh, Chris Grimley's Frankenstein. This is based on the original text by Mary Shelley, written in 1818. Uh, so because it's too early to fall in for Victober, I can't really include it with that, but I can include it with the Spookathon. And this is a, quite a mixture of uh, text and graphic novels, and I absolutely love the artwork within it. And, uh, yeah, it might be something nice to just kind of fly through. Uh, some of the text I think I'm going to have trouble with, and that's when you get into the script writing. Um, that's just going to be a little difficult to read. I know it looks really nice in here, but I think that's going to be a challenge uh, for the reader. But anyway, so I have that. So these are my three uh, books kind of for that one week. One week. I wish it made it at least two weeks. But anyway, that's my Spookathon read-along um, TBR.
and my uh, October TBR minus the audiobooks, of course, and the uh, you know the uh, ebook short stories. So anyway, that's my plans for the month of October. I'm going to be quite busy with either reading or listening to books. Are you guys participating in either one of these? If you are, let me know down below. What are some of your choices? Uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you later. Bye bye.